The books of the Bible are words according to men. Muhammad tells the Jews to bring him a copy of the Torah. And he says, to the copy of the Torah, I believe in you and in the one who revealed you. The Quran does not validate the Bible. As a matter of fact, it warns people, uh, Christians and Jews about altering their, their verses and so forth. It would be the easiest thing in the universe for Allah to say, hey, I, uh, I inspired your original books, but then you corrupted it. It would be very easy. How hard is that? I just said it. Alhamdulillah. The Quran does indeed say for the Jews and the Christians to judge by their scriptures. Now consider what's been stated so far. We've addressed... Uh, contradictions within those scriptures. We've addressed the anonymous authors of those scriptures. And if you don't do any research on your own, you will literally find that there are literal dozens of versions of the Bible, not just, not just translations. We're talking about different versions with different numbers of books and so forth, missing passages and some, some that are added in some, some that are not in others. Therefore, judge by what's been revealed in your scriptures. Uh, what Judge by your scriptures. And should that not create a problem for you? When in those scriptures, we have Jesus, peace be upon him, submitting his will to our creator. And in those scriptures, you have to take these ambiguous statements that are being made to try to suggest that Jesus is the son of God and also God himself with all this, this, this you know, the contradictions that, that exist uh, in various places. Uh, so, yes, judge by your scriptures. Do exactly that. Put it on the scales of logic and reason and decide for yourself. Don't, don't just rely on what the, the preacher is saying on Sunday morning on Wednesday night. Be a reader instead of a repeater. Don't just repeat what you've been told over and over again. Be a reader instead of a repeater. Because what happens is most people, because it's easy, most people don't like to read. It's a lot easier just to go and listen to what the preacher man says on Sunday morning and just roll with that because mom and dad have been telling you the same thing since you was a little kid. They also told you about Santa Claus. He didn't exist. But the fact of the matter is, be a reader instead of a repeater. Uh, put these things on the scale in your own mind. Think logically for yourself. And does it make sense that Jesus, peace be upon him, who's praying to another as his God, is actually God himself? And that's not even the, the you know, the, 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 what it amounts to is that Jesus is in that prayer. He's submitting himself in that prayer to another. And... Uh, you know, that's, that makes him a Muslim again with the literal etymological sense of the word. Well, it's actually uh, awesome that Kenny agrees that Allah orders us to judge by our scriptures, even though he clearly says that repeatedly. You find that in the Quran. Uh, you find that in the Hadith. In fact, the, in, in, uh, in Sunan Abu Daud, Muhammad tells the Jews to bring him a copy of the Torah. And he says, to the copy of the Torah, I believe in you and in the one who revealed you. And then he puts the Torah on this judgment seat and tells the Jews that, that the Torah is their judge. Muhammad also says uh, in Jamia Termini that, that Jews and Christians have the Torah and the gospel in the same way that Muslims have the Quran. Makes no sense if it's been corrupted. And it's very clear that Allah orders us to uh, judge by and live by our scriptures and but it's just it's just strange to hear a muslim admit what the quran so obviously says so hats off to kenny for that um but then kenny says yeah but once you judge by your scriptures you're going to be uh you're going to be confused well that's interesting so so he says god is not the author of confusion in the sense that god's not going to confuse you by this stuff and yet his god orders us to judge by these things that kenny says are very confusing I have to say, I don't find don't find it terribly confusing. It's confusing in the sense of hard to get your mind around, but yeah, all kinds of things are like that. Um, does Jesus submitting to the Father cause a problem for Christians? No, that is foundational to Christian theology. There is no Christianity without the doctrine of the incarnation. There's no there's no Christianity without that. It's foundational to Christianity. Why is Kenny acting like this is all somehow shocking news to us? Um, as for dozens of versions of the Bible, I still don't, I still don't know what he's talking about, but if he's, he, he mentioned that there are uh, textual variants and things like that. Uh, if that's a problem, if that's a problem, uh, fine, there are textual variants in the history of the Quran. Muhammad's followers couldn't even, Muhammad's uh, uh, companions couldn't even agree on what was supposed to go into the Quran. Uh, Ibn Masud had 111 chapters in his, Ubay ibn Qab had 116 chapters in his. The authoritative version now has 114 chapters. We open up the Muslim sources. Sahih Muslim says that two entire chapters were lost because Muslims hardened their hearts and didn't didn't keep reciting them. Uh, large passages came up missing because the only ones who had them uh, died in battle. And even in the world today, you go to different parts of the world today, you have different. Uh, they're called the different. You're called the Kirat, but you have different Qurans in different parts of the world. So if this is a problem and this is all confusing, 
uh, then Islam is confusing once again. And uh, Kenny, you got you got, you got some problems here because the topic is whether Jesus was a Muslim, and Islam looks like is crumbling. <laughs> you, you you can say that, but that doesn't make it a reality, David. Well, these are these are just tactics that he does uh, consistently. But nevertheless, uh, when when the back to the Quran saying to judge by your scriptures in regards to the story about the Jews and so forth bringing the Torah to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they were trying to entrap the Prophet and trying to see what he was going to say about um, the punishment that they were planning to invoke on uh, some people and trying to see what his uh, stance was going to be on it. And he told them quite clearly, judge by your book, judge by your book. I believe in what's been revealed here. You judge by it. And the same thing we're saying. We know what's been revealed in your books, but you judge by it. You, you put it on the scales in your own mind and weigh these for yourself. Each every, every individual listening to this debate now and in the future, you put all of this on the scales of logic and reason and ask yourself, uh, by the and, and you know ask yourselves by the literal etymological sense of the word Muslim, one who submits to God. I've given sources for this this uh, definition, uh, about six of them, uh, during the course of this debate. My opening statement: Does that balance out? Well, yes. One who submits himself to God would, by definition, be a Muslim in the etymological sense of the word. That's the topic of the debate. That's what I came here to prove, and that's been proven today. Um, now, we have to resort to the Christian dilemma and try to go back and attack the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and try to uh, validate the Quran with the, I mean, the Bible with the, the books of the Quran. When if you keep reading the verses of the Quran, we don't have time to go through all this in, in this debate. But we can certainly set up another debate about whether or not the Quran validates the Bible. And we'll see clearly in that debate, I assure you, because truth is made clear from falsehood, the Quran does not validate the Bible. As a matter of fact, it warns people, uh, Christians and Jews about all altering their, their verses and so forth. And um, and we see the evidence of that, by example, uh, the multiple versions that I mentioned, and that's another another topic as well, but we don't want to get off on a red herring on that. Uh, go ahead, David. So after, after saying that the Quran does command us to judge by our scriptures, Kenny now says the Quran doesn't validate our scriptures. Which is weird because, again, Allah says that he revealed our scriptures. He says that we still had the Torah and the gospel uh, during the time of Muhammad. Um, says that no one can change his words. No one can alter his words. Uh, says that the Torah and the gospel were still authoritative over Christians and Jews during his time. In fact, if you read the Quran, very different from the perspective you get from Muslims today. The perspective you get from Muslims today is um, the Torah and the gospel have been corrupted and therefore everyone has to, has to use the Quran. Not the position of the Quran. The position of the Quran is that the Arabs were the last people to get their revelation. And once the Arabs had their revelation, now everyone had their revelation. Everyone has had their prophets. Muhammad is the seal of the prophets because he was just last. That's the perspective. So the Quran is tells other people to go back to their scriptures. You, you Christians, you judge by your scripture. You uh, Jews, you judge by your scripture. Uh, Muslims, we judge by the Quran. Everyone's got their scripture. People eventually found out, as we're seeing here today, that the, the Torah and the gospel just don't line up with the Quran. And so later Muslims were forced to say, ah, the scriptures have been changed, even though that completely contradicts what both Allah and Muhammad repeatedly declare. So there's no way around it. And by the way, you said you'd be willing to debate what, whether the Quran affirms the Bible. That was the topic I suggested. You said you know you'd rather debate uh, whether Muhammad, was, uh, whether Jesus was a prophet, I mean, was it was a Muslim. And uh, happy to do that, but you can't you can't get away from the fact that your scriptures affirm the inspiration, preservation, and authority of our scriptures. As far as Jews and Christians twisting the scriptures, that is a condemnation. Says we, Surah three, verse seventy eight. Says we twist the scriptures with our tongues and so on. Uh, that doesn't mean the text has been corrupted. I mean, there are Muslims. There are obvious. If you're a Muslim, you obviously believe that there are Muslims who twist the scriptures with their tongues. You wouldn't say that means that the that the, uh, the Quran has been corrupted. And so your book affirms our book, warns us not to twist our scriptures. Well, great. We don't need to twist our scriptures to see that over and over and over again, Jesus calls himself the son of God, which would be the worst possible sin in Islam and therefore not what Muhammad meant by Islam. So I was, I was never uh, notified. You didn't notify me about the different topic as a matter of fact so maybe but that's uh, what i suggested yeah so i yeah so i was okay but no it's cool anyway so i, I would so you james 
Shame on you. Anyway, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, he might have asked us for both topic for what topics we want. He might have just said what you want. Yeah, I never. I never okay. seen the other topic. But nevertheless, we can. We can. We can go down that road. But again, judge by your scriptures. Yes, judge by your scriptures, and you cannot change the words of our Creator, the original words given to the prophets and the messengers. Peace be upon them all. Um, and so, uh, what we're what we're dealing with when it comes to the books of the Bible, we're dealing with. The words of Allah, our God, our Creator, whatever whatever word you want to use for our Creator, our Creator, the words of our Creator as revealed to the prophets and the messengers. We all believe that that transpired, and we believe that the original words that He gave them can't be altered and so forth. However, the books of the Bible aren't that. The books of the Bible are words according to men. Men pin these these verses down. Now, yes, men wrote wrote down verses of the Quran. But also memorize the verses of the Quran, right? So that's why Allah has promised in the Quran, by example, to to protect the Quran until the day of judgment in the memory of the minds of the Muslims. So yes, the the, the Quran is the 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 example, matter of fact, of Allah proving that His word cannot be changed. Although the Christians and the Jews beforehand had their 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 scribes and so forth and people making these claims and these anonymous authors did indeed write things with their own hand and that's what the Quran clearly warns Christians about in the Quran so uh, so so yes you can't change the original message of our creator but uh obviously these words according to men aren't the original words of our creator so uh the Book that we're commanded to judge by, and Kenny acknowledged that we're commanded to judge by it. Uh, he now says it's a, these are the words of men. Uh, men, <laughs> this is very interesting. And, and the Quran is only affirming some original, again, not what the Quran is saying. It would be very easy. It would be the easiest thing in the universe for Allah to say, hey, I, uh, I inspired your original books, but then you corrupted it. It would be very easy. How hard is that? I just said it. If that's what Allah really meant, then he is a horrible, horrible communicator. Because when he went to say, what he wanted to say, according to Kenny, was, hey, your books have been corrupted, uh, go with the Quran or something like that, or, or just find the, the parts that line up with Islam. Uh, if that's what he meant, and it comes out, let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah hath revealed therein. Christians and Jews, you have no ground to stand upon except the gospel and the Torah if what he really meant is what Kenny is saying, hey, don't trust those words of men, and it's coming out, judged by your book, you've got the word of God, no one can change Allah's words, then Allah is simply a really, really, really bad communicator. And it's just uh, it's just weird because every debate we have, I mean, in our in our debates about Muhammad and Aisha, I'm the one defending the, the reliability of Hadith passages, and here we are, and I'm the one who has more respect for Allah's statements than Muslims do. Allah says, judge by the judge by the gospel. Okay. You say, David, what does Allah mean there? Sounds like he means judge by the gospel. You ask a Muslim what he means, ah, he means the opposite of what he's saying. The, your, your book's been corrupted, your book's been written by man. Don't trust it. You need the Quran. The opposite of what he says over and over and over again. So we're just in this uh odd situation, <laughs> this odd situation where, where D. Wood is once again the champion of defending the clarity of the Quran.